Uh, and I think Mat Matia is going to handle uh, many of these things here. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll take over for the for the regular day today, and I'll leave Mega Blocks uh, spike phase up to you. Mm -hmm. I, I know I know stuff, but I think you have better overview. So mm -hmm. let's start with how the Gaia V15 is going. Uh, doing great. Uh, we had some hiccups in uh, during testing, but I think we pretty much ironed out all of the bugs that we uh, that we discovered. So from this point onward, we will be moving towards cutting a release candidate and a release. Uh, and as probably Dante is going to tell you, maybe uh, a testnet upgrade soon, and then all of the comps will follow. Uh, after that, why this release is special and why it's so complicated is uh, the hub is actually migrating from the Cosmos hub, Cosmos SDK 45 to 47. We skip 46. There's a bit of tech that to address there, so we're expecting a bit of a a bit of a more uh, a bit of a longer upgrade, but we are handling it. Uh, when all of this reaches the forum, we will also publish any. Uh, new system requirements, uh, which we are uh, expecting. So we are ex expecting like a burst in uh, hardware usage specifically for the upgrade. Uh, it's probably going to be a bursty load. So when once the upgrade uh, finishes and all the upgrade, all the validators have upgraded, you should be able to restore your system to what you had uh, previously. But yeah, we'll publish information uh, well ahead of time. So uh, there's that. Now for the partial set security, the ADR has been uh, released. You can hold on. I had a question about the upgrade. Um, this this happened in Neutron. Um, they had a, a a big migration. Um, I think due to the same actual same upgrade maybe. Um, and uh, it was definitely problematic. Um, I guess Dante, have we tested how long it takes if your computer is not fast enough? Uh, yeah, that's that's the data where we've been collecting. Uh, whenever there's a new uh, or a major change to the main branch, we run it again, and we'll be running it again once the release candidate comes out. Right now, we're at roughly just over one hour uh, for upgrade times. <clears throat> Which... And that is with the hardware most validators have? Uh, hard to tell. This is running with uh, 64 gigs of RAM uh, okay. with, with plenty swap. Okay, well, what happened with Neutron was worse than it taking an hour. Um, what happened with Neutron was that, uh, you know, a lot of validators, um, their machines weren't handling it at all. It crashed and then were not, um, you know, uh, coming back online and they were offline for like 19 hours, right? So I think that's something I'm pretty worried about, actually. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's a very I agree with all of that. Just to give some context to that, uh, with Neutron, there was there were more things happening than than they are for us. Uh, so they also, if I remember this correctly, they backported some stuff from uh, the fifty that we don't have. Also, we have identified some problematic upgrades which we. Uh, opted to turn off and not execute because they were just for uh, client side queries. So we checked with the Cosmos SDK team if, if they are safe to remove. Uh, what will happen for us, we will be lacking a single query endpoint, uh, which allows mm -hmm. you to query, uh, I think, delegators by uh, like the denom, mm. something, something very, very niche. I guess only people like Minscan or somebody else that that big actually has a need for that. So when we were testing, we actually had an upgrade which took six hours. Without Damn. that, without that uh, migration, we significantly reduced the performance impact. Impact. So I think it, the hardware requirements were half, and the runtime was reduced from six hours to like uh, an hour tops. Right, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So yeah. so we avoided that, that one already. Uh, but yeah, it's not exactly the same uh, upgrade. R is more similar to what uh, Osmosis did. And there, I think they upgraded within uh, like 10 minutes. 
but they they had uh, they were slightly ahead of the feature curve for Cosmos SDK. So it's not an apples to apples comparison. Mm -hmm. Whichever other chain you look, it's not an apples to apples comparison. Also, uh, there is there is a migration which takes a long time because it touches every account on Cosmos Hub, and basically everybody has an account on Cosmos Hub. I think that's like two point five million accounts. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, it takes it takes a long time to migrate all of that. Yeah, it's a problem. I mean, um, I remember the one with Neutron. If I, I haven't been super, I wasn't super involved in this, the retro on that, but um, I believe it was the, um, they had a thing where uh, it was the downtime, the actual recording the downtime. And due to the soft opt out, um, that actually um, a lot more downtime was being recorded uh, than, than usual on a chain. Um, and so due to that, uh, due, due to that, it, um, it, um, took a very long time because there was a lot of iterating over these very long downtime records. So, I mean, that's not a problem we're necessarily going to have, I guess. And I think we're not even upgrading to whatever the, the fix was that they did, but yeah. All right. Well, that's something good to be prepared for, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be too worried. I guess if it just is down for an hour. I'm um, especially if we say beforehand, Hey, it's going to be down for an hour. It's more, you know, it's more worrying if, um, yeah, if we have if we have big validators actually have their machines go down. Um, and uh, yeah, I really wish there was like a better way to do these migrations, frankly. Um, but yeah. it's tough because there are, there are yeah. other ways. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's being discussed in various circles. But the thing is, you have a database that you're migrating, right? So you're not yeah. just migrating the code and whenever you're just migrating the database it's kind of difficult and every system in the world has downtime yeah yeah so and it's like you can't sort of like you can't sort of like do it in parallel with the blockchain running because the actual change itself is going to change the outcome of certain transactions and so um you can't really um yeah, yeah. i mean i could yeah. think of ways to do it but it's gonna be very complicated and not something we can just like make happen that easily yeah yeah cool don't, well don't don't quote me on this but the upgrades are actually reorganizing the underlying three data structure used right so you can't really do a hot upgrade on that because your hashes would be off yeah. so you wouldn't be able to progress the chain ethereum does something where they run like the old version and the new version in parallel and switch to the new version when it's ready or something but I think a lot of that has to do with that they never break backwards compatibility, whereas we do it a lot. So that's probably. Uh, yeah, but Ethereum doesn't have the need to migrate storage. So storage on Ethereum is just a blob, with which you, you can do whatever you like. So there's never a need to actually migrate storage on Ethereum. Right? Oh, so they can have using bridges and root hashes and stuff. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, they don't have that. Yep. All right. Well, anyway, let's move on. Um, I hope it goes well. I mean, we'll, we'll keep talking about it, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll also take the testing. So uh, we're making some advancement in testing. Uh, the need that we have now is we have to run test in like a compatibility matrix or the way. So we need to be able to actually test software running in productions from certain versions up to like future versions uh to notice earlier if there are any uh state breaking changes also what we will be probably including into this is compatibility with uh relayer systems just so we can advise uh node operators and relay operators what works from which version of our software that includes both uh gaia and interchain security so those changes will be coming out hopefully in this quarter uh, and now for the partial security, we are moving into Jahan land. So the ADR is out. The work has started. There are exciting things uh, that are happening. So uh, currently it's in a spike phase, what we call uh, a spike phase is us basically checking if the spec can be implemented by the spec or we have to change the spec and see, uh, see that we adapt the specifications to what actually can be achieved. Uh, in the code. So there is the uh, Quint model developed for it, which we are using for uh, integration testing. Uh, there's work that started on the reward distribution. 
a notable difference would be that the rewards for opted in consumer chains will only distribute rewards to the validators that are contributing to that chain's uh, security. Currently, uh, it's a bit complicated, but everybody gets rewards as far as I understand it. That's the short story. Uh, so that's that part. I think Johan can fill it in uh, and work on Megablocks. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to need Jahan to help me with this, but uh, it's going slowly. Uh, what's being developed now uh, is the multiplexer, which is supposed to figure out all of the transactions, uh, order them and execute them correctly or inform tender means that is coming yeah. to you. Uh, about the transactions. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, on parts of security, the ADR is out. That's a pretty complete technical description. There's some details missing, um, but mostly it's there. Uh, we actually probably need, one other thing we need to talk about is um, how to, um, how to uh, basically um, like do a signaling proposal for it. Um, we were going to want to do a signaling proposal before uh, it's kind of ready to deploy. Um, you know, uh, just as part of the chips process and stuff. Um, we didn't want to delay the work too much on that, but uh, we we should get that out soon uh, to follow the process. Uh, we have started working on implementation already. Um, the other thing is, um, the other thing is that, uh, uh, yeah, with with all just yeah, it's mega blocks. So mega blocks is like, um, you know, it's this idea of like atomic IBC. So it's going to be a platform where you can launch app chains, uh, but they kind of all run in one chain, um, but in parallel. Um, so it's maybe a little bit like Solana like, but the 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 way you use it is feels it feels like you're you know you're writing a Cosmos decay chain basically. So we're we're going in at the comet level. We're making it so that one comet instance can run multiple applications. Um, what we have done right now, and it's less of an emphasis for us right now in this quarter than partial security is, um, but. Uh, what we have done right now is um, is basically that um, it uh, well so the like there, I want to get into many details here, but you know, Comet works the ABCI, which is the app, application blockchain interface, uh, and basically lets you know that's it kind of hooks like the the blockchain up the consensus, and so um, what happens is. Um, Usually right now it's like one application hooked up to one blockchain. We're gonna have multiple applications hooked up to, to one blockchain. And so um the thing we have done now is 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 sort of having the thing that hooks everything up, but it's still only hooking one application up to one blockchain, but just making sure like the whole round trip works and stuff. And what we're starting work on right now is having multiple applications hooked up to the one blockchain. So um that involves like looking at the blocks. And um, there's, a, there's a bunch of questions around that. Like basically you get a block of transactions that are all meant for different applications, having to separate those out. Uh, you know, what do you do if one of the applications is a hundred transactions that want to get in and every other application only has one transaction that wants to get in. And, you know, you in theory only want 10 transactions per block for each application, just hypothetically, you know, it's not really that number, but you know, what do you do? Do you like, do we want a system where, the blocks of like one application can actually grow uh, or are we going to say it's going to be limited to this number? Um, the other thing is like, what if one application takes a long time to process all the transactions? What do you do then? Um, ideally, we want to have a thing where, um, ideally we want to have a thing where you kind of, um, it will it will time out and like let it come back the next block, basically. Like if it needs extra time, it can like just catch up and like basically that application will skip a block. It's sort of like if a chain has a really long block, which happens sometimes. So it's like a lot of stuff like that. Um, but we've, you know, started um, started prototyping it. So we're moving along with it. Yeah, and with this, I think the informal hub side is done with the overview. So I hand it over to Dante. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the first section is about yeah testing on V15 and uh, just a summary of the things we found uh, in testing builds off the Gaia main branch. 
the first issue with the high resource use we already talked about. Uh, something we found out was that the, uh, the validator said change packets were not being re really to the consumer chains. It's been fixed. Um, as part of our LSM tests, we noticed that some of, uh, or the, and no ICA delegations were not being executed post upgrade. That's also been fixed. And uh, there was this the mitigation measure for avoiding uh, spam vote transactions. It was not working at first. It's working now. Uh, the only uh, pending item we have in our tests, uh, it looks like it's a Go Relayer issue where uh, after upgrading, we get errors in the log for the for the Go Relayer saying that the validator set hash uh, does not match between uh, the expected and, and, and the resulting one. Um, otherwise, Gaia B15 seems to be, yeah, all tests are passing right now. Um, just a summary on, in terms of what baseline tests we're running now in our upgrade workflows. Uh, they, they include uh, PFM tests, global fee, LSM, and the uh, consumer chains that we're la launching within the uh, the workflows go from uh, consumer chains from version 3.1.0 all the way to 3.3.0. Uh, we're uh, working at adding the, uh, the version 4.0.0 to, to the workflows. Um, in terms of V15 specific tests that are also passing are the changes to the minimum commission param, the, uh, the anti-spamming measure uh, on minimum deposit still works, uh, the mitigation for spam vote transactions uh, that I talked about earlier, and the, uh, the vesting clawback uh, for uh, the governance, governance proposal. That's, it's all good to go. Uh, also, something we did in the last couple of weeks, we tested the latest release candidate for version 4 of ICS. Uh, yeah, that's we're also testing version 4 soon and adding it to our, our upgrade workflows. In terms of work around testnets, um, on the release testnet, theta testnet, we increased delegations. And in doing so, we increased validator bond shares in our validators for some people who are running uh, liquid staking module tests. Uh, today, we run our very first demo day where um, we showed people how uh, different proposal outcomes lead to uh, deposits being burned. And this is just for uh, illustration purposes, given the uh, amount of spam we sometimes see in the Cosmos Hub. Uh, more than 30 uh, validators participated, good chatter in Discord, a few people sharing their uh, block explorers. So that was very, very positive. And uh, right now, we are. Uh, looking at next week for upgrading our, our test nets to B15, um, going to service some validators. And we are, we're thinking of doing a stepped upgrade where we do like the release test net on Tuesday and we do the release uh, replicated security test net on Wednesday. Um, that's, that's where we are right now. Um, well, yeah. I guess I, I guess we can move on to questions, comment. All righty. I think I think uh, David, unless you have any questions, I think most folks on the call might be internal, so um, we can definitely close it out uh, early. If we all feel good about that. All righty. Okay, it's then. Fine, fine by me. Okay, great. Um, we will post the recap um, very soon. I will upload this um, as soon as we can. So thank you, everyone, for your time. And we will see you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.